Hi folks, I am the Lavender Lady, Diana Clarion. In the Facebook group, Philosophy of the Place, my friend Stephen White opened a discussion with this statement. Onus probandi incumbit ei quidisit, non ei qui negat, better known as the burden of proof. Onus applies only to speech acts. Actually, it only applies to one speech act, assertion. Onus is then about language and disputes. The above actually translates, the burden is on the one declaring, not on the one denying. After listening to discussions with participation from Stephen, Aaron Ra, and Ozymandias Ramses II, I've been doing a lot of thinking about this concept of burden of proof. Stephen mentions assertion and goes on to state, importantly, Note that disclosure is a type of speech act that many confuse for asserting and then think onus exists. I believe that is true isn't an assertion but disclosure about how one is disposed, not asserting what is true of some state of affairs. I will now do something that all too often makes my brain hurt, namely split hairs. I contend that disclosure is indeed an assertion, i.e., I believe that this is true is an assertion about my state of mind. What must now be done in regard to a burden of proof, however, is to examine how that assertion fits into the discussion at hand. Consider the following. You state, my God exists. I reply, it is raining. This exchange may seem silly at best, but bear with me a moment. My reply to the claim, my God exists, is an assertion, but there is no onus here because the assertion does not address the original claim. Now, to my point. You state, my God exists. I reply, I don't believe you. I am making an assertion, namely that I do not accept your claim but I don't have a burden of proof because my reply is not about your God, it is about your claim, namely that I don't accept it. It is now incumbent upon you to demonstrate that your God does exist. You have the burden. When you have satisfied that burden, I must accept the claim. It will have been proven. The problem is, that all too many confuse I don't believe you with you are wrong. Now the latter would sound like you state my God exists. I reply no it doesn't. Here I have addressed your claim. I have made an assertion about the God in question. I have asserted that there is no such thing. You still have your onus but now I have mine as well. But how can this be the case? How can it be necessary to prove both sides of a dichotomy? The answer to that is that this is not a dichotomy. There is a third possibility, that being that the question is undecidable. It might be the case that you define your God as existing outside the possibility of interaction with this universe. If so, I could no more prove that your God does not exist than you could prove that it does. If, on the other hand, you define your God in some self-contradictory manner, as William Lane Craig does, I can easily show that the existence of that God is impossible, and you will be hard-pressed to refute my refutation. Many people, however, miss the possibility of undecidability because the question of the existence of gods is often emotionally charged. John Matter, a.k.a. Dark Matter 2525, elaborates on this point in terms of romantic attraction in a video entitled The Real God, an Epiphany. Here is a clip. The inaccuracy can be easily seen from the romantic perspective. The analogy would look like this. Theresa tries to set Anthony up on a blind date with Gloria. Anthony doesn't think that Theresa even knows Gloria. 
or that she's acting as an agent on Gloria's behalf. Did Anthony actually reject Gloria? No. What if Anthony doesn't... See below for a link to the video, as well as links to Aaron Rai's YouTube channel, to Ozzy's YouTube channel, to Philosophy of the Place and the post that inspired this response, and to NCG Studios, where Stephen, Aaron, Ozzy, and I occasionally appear. Thank you for watching, and please consider subscribing. Until next time, I am the Lavender Lady, Diana Clarion, and that was an assertion.